Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE showcase, accelerating business transformation with VMware Cloud on AWS. It's a solution innovation conversation with two great guests, Fred Worden, VP of Commercial Services at AWS, and Narayan Bardawaj, who's the VP and General Manager of Cloud Solutions at VMware. Gentlemen, thanks for uh, joining me on the showcase. Great to be here. Hey, thanks for having us on. It's a great topic. You know, we, we've been covering this VMware cloud on AWS since, since the launch going back. And it's been amazing to watch the evolution from people saying, oh, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's, what's, the, what's this mean? Uh, and, and the press were, were, were kind of not really on board with kind of the vision, but as it played out, as you guys had announced together, it did work out great for VMware, it did work out great for AWS, and it continues to years later. And I want to just get an update from you guys on where you guys see this has been going, I'll see multiple years. Where is the evolution of the solution as we are right now coming off uh, VMware Explore just recently and going into reInvent, uh, which is only a couple of weeks away. Uh, feels, feels like tomorrow, but uh, you know, as, as we prepare, a lot going on. Where are we with the evolution of the solution? I mean, first thing I want to say is, you know, October 2016 was a seminal moment in the history of IT, right? When Pat Gelsinger and Andy Jassy came together to announce this. And I think, John, you were there at the time I was there. It was a great, great moment. We launched the solution in 2017, the year after that at VMworld, back when we called it VMworld. I think we've gone from strength to strength. One of the things that has really mattered to us is We've learned from AWS also in the process is this notion of working backwards. So we're really, really focused on customer feedback as we build the service offering, now five years old. Pretty remarkable journey. Uh, you know, in the first years, we tried to get across all the regions. Um, you know, that was a big focus because there was so much demand for it. In the second year, we started going really on enterprise great features. We invented this pretty awesome feature called stretch clusters where you could stretch a vSphere cluster using vSAN NSX across two AZs in the same region. Pretty phenomenal four nines of availability that applications start, started to get with that particular feature. And we kept moving forward, all kinds of integration with AWS Direct Connect, transit gateways, with our own advanced networking capabilities. Uh, you know, along the way, disaster recovery, we punched out two new, two new services just focused on that. And then more recently, we launched our Outposts partnership. We were up on stage at reInvent, uh, again with Pat and Andy announcing AWS Outposts and the VMware flavor of that, VMware Cloud and AWS Outposts. Uh, I think it's been significant growth in our federal sector as well with our FedRAMP high certification more recently. So all in all, we are super excited. We're five years old. The customer momentum is really, really strong. We are scaling the service massively across all geos and industries. That's great, great update. And I think one of the things that you mentioned was how the advantages you guys got from that uh, relationship. Uh, and, and this has kind of been the theme for AWS, man, since I can remember from day one, Fred, you guys do the heavy lifting as, as is always say for the customers here, VMware comes on board, takes advantage of the AWS and kind of just doesn't miss, miss a beat continues to move their workloads that everyone's using, you know, vSphere. And these are, these are big workloads on AWS. What's the AWS perspective on this? Um, how well, do you see it? Yeah, um, it's pretty fascinating to watch how fast customers can actually transform and move. When you take the, the skill set that they're familiar with and the advanced capabilities that they've been using on-prem and then overlay it on top of the AWS infrastructure that's, that's evolving quickly and, and building out new hardware and new instances we'll talk about. Um, but that combined experience between both of us uh, on a jointly engineered solution uh, to bring the best security and the best features that really matter for those workloads uh, drive a lot of efficiency and speed for the, for the customer. So it's been well received and the partnership is stronger than ever from an engineering standpoint, from a business standpoint. And obviously it's been very interesting to look at just how we stay day one in terms of looking at new features and work and, and responding to what customers want. So pretty, pretty excited about just seeing the transformation and the speed that which customers can move to uh, VMC. Yeah, that's a great value proposition. We've been talking about that in context to anyone building on top of the cloud, they can have their own super cloud as we call it. If you take advantage of all the CapEx and, and investment Amazon's made and AWS has made and, and, and continues to make in performance, IaaS and PaaS, all great stuff. Uh, I have to ask you guys both, as you guys see this going to the next level, 
Um, what are some of the differentiations you see around the service compared to other options in the market? What makes it different? What's the combination? You mentioned jointly engineered. Um, what are some of the key uh, differentiators of the service compared to others? Yeah, I think one of the key things Fred talked about is this jointly engineered notion. Right from day one, we were the early adopters of the AWS Nitro platform, right? The reinvention of EC2 back five years ago. And so we've been you know, having a very, very strong engineering partnership at that level. I think from a VMware customer standpoint, you get the full software defined data center, compute storage networking on EC2 bare metal across all regions. You can scale that elastically up and down. It's pretty phenomenal just having that consistency globally, right? On AWS, EC2, um, uh, global regions. Now, the other thing that's a real differentiator for us, as customers tell us about is this whole notion of a managed service, right? And this was somewhat new to VMware. But we took away the pain of uh, this undifferentiated heavy lifting where customers had to provision, rack stack hardware, configure the software on top, and then upgrade the software and the security patches on top. So we took, took away all of that pain as customers transition to VMware Cloud and AWS. In fact, my favorite story from last year when we were all going through the Log4j debacle, the industry was just going through that, right? Favorite proof point from customers was before they could even raise uh, this issue to us, we sent them a notification saying, uh, we already patched all of your systems, no action from you. And the customers were super thrilled. I mean, these are large banks, many other customers around the world, super thrilled they had to take no action, but a pretty incredible industry challenge that we were all facing. No, right. that's, so, a great, um, that's a great point. You know, the whole managed service piece brings up the security and you're kind of teasing at it, but you know, there's always vulnerabilities that emerge when you're doing complex logic. And as you grow your solutions, there's more bits, you know, Fred, we were commenting that before we came on camera, there's more bits than ever before and, and at, at the physics layer too, as well as the software. So you never know when there's going to be a zero day vulnerability out there. Uh, just, it happens. We saw one with Fortinet this week, um, this came out of the woodwork, but moving fast on those patches is huge. Um, this brings up the whole support angle. I wanted to ask you about how you guys are are doing that as well because to me we see the value when we hit, when we talk to customers on the cube about this you know it was a real real easy understanding of how what the cloud means to them with VMware now with the AWS but the question that comes up that we want to get more clarity on is how do you guys handle the support together well what's interesting about this is that it's it's done mutually we have dedicated support teams on both sides that work together pretty seamlessly to make sure that whether there's a issue at any layer, including all the way up into the app layer, as you think about some of the other workloads like SAP, we'll go end to end and make sure that we support the customer, uh, regardless of where uh, the particular issue might be for them. Uh, and on top of that, we look at where, where we're improving reliability in, in, as a first order of, of principle between both companies. So from an availability and reliability standpoint, it's, it's top of mind and no matter where the particular uh, item might land, we're going to go help the customer resolve that. Works really well. On the VMware side, what's been the feedback there? What's the, what are some of the updates? Yeah, I think, uh, look, I mean, VMware owns and operates the service, but we have a phenomenal backend relationship with AWS. Customers call VMware for the service for any issues. Uh, and then we have a, awesome relationship with AWS on the back end for support issues or any hardware issues, capacity management that we jointly do, right? All of the hard problems that customers don't have to worry about. Uh, I think on the front end, we also have a really good group of solution architects across the companies that help to really explain the solution, do complex things like cloud migration, which is much, much easier with VMware Cloud and AWS. Uh, you know, we're presenting that easy button to the public cloud in many ways. And so we have a whole technical audience across the two companies that are working with customers every single day. You know, you had mentioned, I've got a list here, some of the innovations, the, you mentioned the stretch clustering, you know, getting the geos working, advanced network disaster recovery, um, you know, Fed, FedRAMP, um, public sector certifications, outposts, 
All good. You guys are checking the boxes every year. You got a good, good accomplishments list there on the VMware AWS side here in this relationship. The question that I'm interested in is what's next? What uh, recent innovations are you doing? Are you making investments in? What's on the list this year? What items will be next year? How do you see the, the new things, the list of accomplishments? People want to know what's next. They don't want to see stagnant uh, uh, growth here. They want to see more action, you know, as, as uh, cloud kind of <laughs> continues to scale and modern applications, cloud native, you're seeing more and more containers, more and more, you know, more CF, CI, CD pipelining with, with modern apps, put more pressure on the system. What's new? What's the new innovations? Absolutely, and I think as a five-year-old service offering, uh, innovation is top of mind for us every single day. So just to call out a few recent innovations that we announced in San Francisco at VMware Explore. Um, first of all, uh, our new platform, i4i.metal, it's isolate based, it's pretty awesome. It's the latest and greatest, uh, with all the speeds and feeds that you would expect from VMware and AWS at this point in our relationship. We announced two different storage options. This notion of working from customer feedback, and allowing customers even more price reductions, really take off that storage and park it externally, right? And you know, separate that from compute. So we have two different storage offerings there. One is with AWS FSx with NetApp ONTAP, which brings in our NetApp partnership as well into the equation, and really get that NetApp base really excited about this offering as well. And the second storage offering called VMware Cloud Flex Storage, VMware's own managed storage offering. Beyond that, we have done a lot of other innovations as well. I really wanted to talk about VMware Cloud Flex Compute, where previously customers could only scale by hosts, and a host is 36 to 48 cores, give or take. But with VMware Cloud Flex Compute, we are now allowing this notion of a resource-defined compute model where customers can just get exactly the vCPU memory and storage that maps to the applications, however small they might be. So this notion of granularity is really a big innovation that, that we are launching in the market this year. And then last but not least, uh, talk about ransomware. Of course, it's a hot topic in the industry. Uh, we are seeing many, many customers ask for this. We are happy to announce a new ransomware recovery with our VMware Cloud DR solution. Uh, a lot of innovation there and the way we are able to do machine learning and make sure the workloads that are recovered from uh, snapshots and backups are actually safe to use. So there's a lot of differentiation on that front as well. Um, a lot of networking innovations with Project North Star for ability to have layer four through layer seven uh, you know, yeah. new SaaS services in that area as well. Keep in mind that the service already supports managed Kubernetes for containers. It's built in to the same clusters that have virtual machines. And so this notion of a single service with a great TCO for VMs and containers is sort of at the heart of our offering. Yeah. The networking side certainly is a hot area to keep innovating on every year. It's the same, same conversation, get better, faster, networking, more, more options there. The Flex Compute's interesting. If you don't mind me getting a quick clarification, could you explain the difference between resource defined versus hardware defined? Because this is kind of what we had saw at Explore coming out, that notion um, of resource defined versus hardware defined. What's the, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been super successful in this hardware defined notion where we're scaling by the hardware unit uh, that we present as software-defined data centers, right? And so that's been super successful. But we, you know, customers wanted more, especially customers in different parts of the world wanted to start even smaller and grow even more incrementally, right? Lower their costs even more. And so this is the part where resource-defined starts to be very, very interesting as a way to think about, you know, here's my bag of resources exactly based on what the customer has requested. For five virtual machines, five containers, it's sized exactly for that. And then as utilization grows, we elastically, behind the scenes, we're able to grow it through policies. So that's a whole different dimension. It's a whole different service offering that adds value. When customers are comfortable, they can go from one to the other. They can go back to that host-based model if they so choose to. 
and there's a jump off point across these two different economic models. It's kind of cloud flexibility right there. I like the name. Fred, let's get into some of the uh, examples of customers, if you don't mind. Let's get into some of the, uh, we have some time. I want to unpack a little bit of what's going on with the customer deployments. One of the things we've heard, um, again, on theCUBE is from customers is they like the clarity of the relationship. They love the cloud positioning of it. And then what happens is they lift and shift the workloads and it's like, feels great. It's just like we're running VMware. Uh, on AWS, and then they would start consuming higher level services, kind of that adoption next level happens. Um, and because it's in the cloud. So, so can you guys take us through some recent examples of customer wins or deployments where they're using VMware Cloud on AWS on getting started and then how do they progress once they're there? How does it evolve? Can you just walk us through a couple of use cases? Sure. Um, there's a, well, there's a couple. One, it's pretty interesting that, you know, like you said, as there's more and more bits, you need better and better hardware and networking. And we're super excited about the I-4 uh, and the capabilities there in terms of doubling and or tripling what we're doing around a lower variability on latency and just improving all the speeds. But what customers are doing with it, like the college in New Jersey, um, they're accelerating their deployment on, a, on onboarding over like 7,400 students over a six to eight month period. And they've really realized a ton of savings. But what's interesting is where and how they can actually grow onto additional native services too. So connectivity to any other services is available as they start to move and migrate into this. Um, the, the options there obviously are tied to all the innovation that we have across any services, whether it's containerized, uh, and with what they're doing with Tanzu or with any other container and or uh, services within AWS. So there's there's some pretty interesting scenarios where that data and or the processing, which is moved quickly with full compliance, whether it's in like healthcare or regulatory business, uh, is, is allowed to then consume and use things, for example, with text extract or any other really cool service that has, you know, monthly and quarterly innovations. So there's things that you just can't, could not do before that are coming out uh, and saving customers money and building innovative applications on top of their, uh, their current uh, app base in, in a rapid fashion. So pretty excited about it. There's a lot of examples. I think I don't, probably don't have time to go into too, too many here, yeah. uh, but that's actually the best part is listening to customers and seeing how many net new services and new applications are they actually building on top of this platform. Now, Ryan, what's your perspective from the VMware side? Cause you know, you guys have now a lot of headroom to offer customers with Amazon's you know, higher level services and or whatever's homegrown, what is being rolled out. Cause you now have a lot of hybrid too. So, so what's, your, what's your take on what, what's happening in, with customers? I mean, it's been phenomenal. The, the customer adoption of this, and, you know, banks and many other highly sensitive verticals are running production grade applications, tier one applications on the service over the last five years. And so, you know, I have a couple of really good examples. S&P Global is one of my favorite examples, large bank, uh, they merged with IHS market, big sort of conglomeration now. Both customers were using VMware Cloud and AWS in different ways. And with the, uh, with the use case, you know, one of their use cases was, how do I just respond to these global opportunities without having to invest in physical data centers? And then how do I migrate and consolidate all of my data centers across the globe, of which there were many? And so one specific example for this company was how they migrated 1,000 1, workloads to VMware Cloud and AWS in just six weeks. Pretty phenomenal if you think about everything that goes into a cloud migration process, people process technology. And the beauty of the technology going from VMware point A to VMware point B, the, the lowest cost, lowest risk approach uh, to adopting VMware Cloud and AWS. So that's uh, you know, one of my favorite examples. There are many other examples across other verticals that we continue to see. Um, the good thing is we're seeing rapid expansion across the globe. We're constantly entering new markets uh, with a limited number of regions and progressing our roadmap there. Yeah. It's great to see, I mean, the data center migrations go from months, many, many months to weeks. It's interesting um, to see some of those success stories. So what, congratulations. One of the other, of the other uh, interesting and uh, uh, fascinating uh, uh, benefits is the sustainability improvement in terms of being green. So the efficiency gains that we have both in current 
uh, generation and new generation processors and everything that we're doing to make sure that when a customer can be elastic, they're also saving power, which is really critical in a lot of regions worldwide at this point in time. They're, they're seeing those benefits. If you're running really inefficiently in your own data center, uh, that is just a, a, a not a great use of power. So uh, the actual calculators and the benefits to uh, these workloads is, are pretty phenomenal just in being more green, which I, I like. We just all need to do our part there, and, and this is a big part of it here. It's um, a huge, it's a huge well. point about the sustainability, Fred. I'm glad you called that out. The other one I would say is supply chain issues. Another one, you see that constraints, I can't buy hardware. And the third one is really obvious, but no one really talks about it. It's security, right? I mean, um, I remember interviewing Steven Schmidt with that AWS and many years ago. Um, this is like 2013. And, um, you know, at that time, people were saying, the cloud's not secure. And he's like, listen, it's more secure in the cloud than on-premise. And if you look at the security breaches, it's all about the on-premise data center vulnerabilities, not so much hardware. So there's a lot, you got to the, the, the stay current on, on the isolation there is hard. So I think, I think the security and supply chain, Fred, is, is another one. Yeah. Do you agree? I, I absolutely agree. Uh, it's, it's hard to manage supply chain nowadays. Uh, we put a lot of effort into that. And I think we have a great ability to forecast and make sure that we can lean in and, and have the resources that are available and run them, run them more efficiently. Yeah. Uh, and then, like you said, on the security point, security is job one. It is, it is the only P1. And if you think of how we build our infrastructure from nitro all the way up and how we respond and work with our partners and our customers, uh, there's nothing more important. And Narayan, your point earlier about the managed service, patching and being on top of things is really going to get better. All right, final question. I really want to thank you for your time on this showcase. It's really been a great conversation. Uh, Fred, you had made a comment earlier. I want to kind of end with a kind of a curveball and put you guys on the spot. We're talking about a modern, a new modern shift. It's another, we're seeing another inflection point. We've been documenting it. It's almost like cloud hitting another inflection point um, with application and open source growth uh, significantly at the app layer continue to put a lot of pressure and, and innovation in the infrastructure side. So the question is for you guys each to answer is, what's the same and what's different in today's market? So it's kind of like, we want more of the same here, but also things have changed radically and better here. What are the, what's, what's changed for the better and where, what's still the same kind of thing hanging around that people have focused on? Can you share your perspective? I'll, 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 I'll tackle it. Um, you know, uh, businesses are complex and they're often unique. Uh, that That's the same. Uh, what's changed is how fast you can innovate. The ability to combine managed services and new innovative services and build new applications is so much faster today, leveraging world-class hardware uh, that you don't have to worry about that's elastic. You, you could not do that even five, 10 years ago to the degree you can today, especially with the innovation. So, Innovation is accelerating uh, at, a, at a rate that most people can't even comprehend and understand the, the set of services that are available to them. It's really fascinating to see what a one pizza team of, of engineers can go actually develop in a week. It is phenomenal. So super excited about this space and it's only going to continue to accelerate. That, that's my take. Narayan. You got a lot of yeah, platforms to compete on with Amazon. You got a lot to build on. The Narayan, your side, what's your, what's your answer to that question? I think we are seeing a lot of innovation with new applications that customers are constantly doing. I think uh, what we see is this whole notion of how do you go from desktop to production to the secure supply chain, and how can we truly uh, you know, build on the agility that developers desire and build all the security and the pipelines to energize that move to production quickly and efficiently. I think we, we are seeing, uh, you know, we are at the very start of that sort of, uh, of journey. Um, of course, we have invested in Kubernetes, the means to an end, but there's so much more beyond that's happening in the industry. And I think we're at the very, very beginning of this transformation, this enterprise transformation that many of our customers are going through and we're inherently part of it. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate that. We're seeing the same thing. It's more the same here on, you know, solving these complexities with abstractions, whether it's, you know, higher level services with large scale infrastructure um, at, at your fingertips, infrastructure as code, 
infrastructure to be provisioned, serverless, all the good stuff happening, Fred, with AWS on your side. And we're seeing customers resonate with this idea of being an operator again, being a cloud operator and developer. So the developer ops is kind of, <laughs> DevOps is kind of changing too. So all for the better. Thank you for spending the time and we're seeing again that traction with the VMware customer base and AWS getting, getting along great together. So thanks for sharing your perspectives. They appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay, this is theCUBE and AWS VMware Showcase accelerating business transformation. VMware Cloud on AWS, jointly engineered solution, bringing innovation to the VMware customer base, going to the cloud and beyond. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.